all you guys have heard how Muslims love to tell you that Islam must be the one true religion. Why? Because our Prophet made some very accurate predictions. More accurate than Nostradamus, even though there were no accuracy in Nostradamus' prediction, uh, predictions. But Muslims love to claim that. One such claim is, I'm sure you've all heard, the Prophet Muhammad said in the Quran, okay, well, according to them, Allah said, that uh, when Persians defeated the Byzantinians, Prophet Muhammad heard the news and he said, mm, okay, but in a few years, few years, not three, four, or I think it happened seven years later, but anyway, in a few years, Byzantinians will, will defeat um, uh, the Persians. And Muslims say, voila, see? So, yeah, so, so basically, this is the yardstick, yeah? So you say, in a 50-50 odds, you say one country, and if you put a if you put wager on one country, and that country happens to be uh, the winner, then you say we won, and uh, there you go, must be one true religion. By the way, there's so many other people who who actually predicted. With Taker Chambers, he put he published a book in 1964 called Cold Friday, and he predicted that Soviet Union would collapse. And there are actually that's just one guy. There are actually plenty of other people as well. If you, there's a whole article uh, on Wikipedia which is filled with all these names who actually predicted the fall of, of the Soviet Union. So they must all be prophets then. Technically speaking, prophets actually does mean someone who actually tells a prophecy, but obviously there's no such thing as prophecy. It's all BS. Um, but anyway, so Prophet Muhammad made... So that's just one particular one because it's in the Quran. But Prophet Muhammad apparently made a lot of other predictions as well. Uh, so let's just go through some of them. I have quite a lot of them, but let's just go through some of them. Mind you, some of these some of these hadiths are actually racist in nature, as Muslims love to tell you that Islam is not racist. But I'll leave it to your imagination. So here we go. Let's have a look at the first one. So Allah's messenger said, the hour will not be established. This is my favorite one. Till the buttocks of the women of the tribe of Daus move while going around the al Khalasa. The al Khalasa was the idol of the Daus tribe, which they used to worship in the pre-Islamic period of ignorance. Now, this is very embarrassing for Muslims. I'm really sorry. I didn't say it. This is, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's, it's from your own book, Sahih Bukhari 7116. But just imagine buttocks of women jiggling. I think maybe this might be true because I think Prophet Muhammad is talking about twerking, but the only difference is twerking around the tribe of the Al Khalasa. This is what Prophet Muhammad means. <laughs> so that's been going on. <laughs> Where's Nicki Minaj? <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, this is too much. <laughs> all right. Jeez, I'm already okay. I, I think maybe I should do a solo show. I, I can let loose. Okay, maybe I need someone to actually, um, you know, pull me back. Okay, so so Prophet Muhammad predicted twerking. I want a hell of a twer um, prediction, yeah. Okay, what else have we got? Let's have a look at the next one. Okay. Okay, so say Muslim 912, the sun eclipsed during the time of the messenger of Allah. He stood in great anxiety, fearing that it might be the doomsday. You know, like, it's, look at it. I mean, this is so basic. This is so stupid. I mean, this is equivalent of those uh, Native Americans uh, when... Christopher Columbus went there, and they every time they looked at the uh, 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 some uh, a solar eclipse, they thought that oh, this was the end of the world. That was the level of Prophet Muhammad. Um, anyway, till he came to the mosque, he stood up to pray with prolonged qiyam ruku um, and prostration, which I never saw him doing in prayer. And then he said, "These are the signs which Allah sends, not on account of the death of anyone or life of anyone." By the way, this is a reference to the fact that Prophet Muhammad's son, Abdullah, uh, or Ibrahim, sorry, had just died. So people thought that, oh, because, um, because uh, the son of a prophet has died, that's why Allah is sending these signs, or maybe the sky is sad that Prophet's son has died. But then Muhammad uh, dropped down his narcissism just a little bit, and he said, no, 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 this is not because of anyone's death. 
but Allah sends them to frighten thereby his servants. Do you get frightened if you look at the solar eclipse or any type of eclipse, lunar eclipse? Do you get frightened? No, you don't. And what sign, what sign are we supposed to get from it from, from a sol random solar eclipse from 1400 years ago? What was the freaking message? And that message still hasn't been delivered. So when you see any such thing, hasten to remember him, supplicate him, and beg pardon from him. And in the narration transmitted by Ibn blah, 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 the sun eclipse. Okay, he frightens his servants. Okay, sorry, there's no prediction in that. This is just stupid. Um, okay. Um, the prophet prayed one of the Isha prayers in his last days. And after finishing it with Taslim, he stood up and said, do you realize the importance of this night? Uh, no, I don't think so, but I have a feeling I'm about to find out from the Prophet of Allah. Okay, so what does Prophet of Allah has to say about this? Nobody present on the surface of the earth tonight. Listen to this point. Nobody present on the surface of the earth tonight would be living after the completion of 100 years from this night. So nobody present on the surface of the earth tonight would be living after the completion of 100 years from tonight. So... Unless somebody lived longer than 100 years, or let's say if a baby was born that day and he happened to live for 100, and 100, day, 100 years and two days, <laughs> then the prophet. Anyway, why am I saying that? We, we have no way of finding out. But the people made a mistake in grasping the meaning of the statement of Allah's message, and they indulged in those things which are said about these narratives. Some said that the day of resurrection will be established after 100 years. But the prophet said nobody present on the surface of earth tonight would be living after the completion of 100 years from this night. He meant when that century, people of the century would pass away. So, okay. Can you blame those people who thought that prophet is saying that the, that the day of resurrection will be established within these 100 years? Because what's so special about this statement that, hey, Everyone who is alive today would be dead, dead in a hundred years. You'd be like, uh, okay, I already know this. Why would you tell me this? Like, I mean, would you would you tell me a man of great wisdom if I said, guys, everyone who's over 20 years will be dead in a hundred years or 80 years or whatever, especially back in those days when people didn't used to live up to a hundred years. So it's not as why, why, why would Prophet make that statement? So I am with those people who thought that the that the Prophet was saying that everyone uh, the hour the, the judgment day the armageddon whatever however the doomsday would be established within the hundred years so um uh, you know depending on how you see it but um i don't, I don't think i think if this is another bad prediction um look at this one um abu saad reported that when allah's apostle came back from tabuk they his companions asked about the last hour thereupon allah's messenger said there would be none amongst the created beings living on the earth who would survive this century there would be none amongst the created beings so the problem here is this is this is where it comes from Sahih muslim 2539 and the previous one was Sahih bukhari 601 so i believe they both are talking about the same instant and here's the subject but obviously this is the heading um so obviously a lot of people thought that otherwise saying that oh everyone would be dead in 100 years that's a very silly unnecessary statement okay and anus reported allah's messenger is saying i and the last hour have been sent like this he while doing it joined the forefinger with the middle finger so prophet muhammad said that i and the last day have been sent like this now that means you know prophet muhammad you know uh, uh, this should have happened already this is another false prediction uh, the last hour should have been established by now. Um, there, there's another hadith. I don't know if it's in there or not. He said that Prophet Muhammad said that um, I, uh, I I came so close to the judgment day that I that I uh, that the judgment day almost preceded me, like almost, like it almost came before me. Like I'm I'm, I'm so close to it. Um, I don't think 1400 years is can can be defined by so close in in human terms unless uh, muslims can say ah oh, prophet muhammad was talking about the geological terms <laughs> okay in that case it could be a million years who knows um but yeah you can expect anything from our muslim friends anyway i saw jabir bin abdullah swearing by allah that ibn sayyad was the was the dajjal i said to jabir how can you swear by allah jabir said i have heard umar swearing by allah regarding this matter in the presence of the prophet and the prophet did not disapprove of it okay i think it's in relation to another one but i can't 
you know, remember. But anyway, so he said the Jal. Oh yes. Yeah. So the point um, why he called him the Jal. They say that the Jal is only going to arrive near the end times. So if the Jal was running around, whoever this guy is, even say or something. And if someone says that, oh, the Jal has already arrived, and Prophet Muhammad did not disapprove of it, then it means, you know, either the Jal story, um, uh, the Jal arriving just before the judgment day is false, or there is going to be no judgment day. Another prediction. You swear by Allah, he said, I heard Umar swearing that in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, but the Messenger of Allah did not make any objection to it. So this is the same uh, point about the Jal, the Antichrist. Uh, this is Sunan Abu, Abu Dawood as well, Sayyid Bukhari as well. And th these are both Sahih Hadiths. Okay, look at this. How paranoid our dearly beloved Prophet was. That the Prophet once came to her in a state of fear, Zainab bint Jash. This is the same Zainab that used to be Prophet Muhammad's daughter-in-law. And then he said, oh, Zainab, <laughs> Allah has uh, married you to me. Sorry, not my... I can't do anything. Allah, Allah wants it that way. Come on, let's go. <laughs> so anyway, so the, uh, the prophet once came to her in a state of fear and said, none has a right to be worshipped but Allah. Woe unto Arabs from a danger that has come near. An opening has been made in the wall of Gog and Magog. And according to Yasikati, um, um, zombies from The Walking Dead. Gog and Magog like this, making a circle with his thumb. An index finger. So he's saying that opening has been made. So the wall has been breached. So they're coming. The Gog and Magog are coming. But Zainab bin Tajaj said, oh, last message, shall we, uh, shall we be destroyed even though there are pious person amongst us? He said, yes, when the evil person will increase. So what happened? The guy was obviously deluded and he was, he was, just, he was, he was paranoid. He was just losing it. Prophet was losing it. Anyway. There, there are a few more of these. I heard the Messenger of Allah saying the last hour would come when the Romans would form a majority amongst people. Okay? The last hour would come. It's not, it's not, would, would not come before this happened. It's actually says the last hour would come when the Romans would form a majority amongst people. Now, this is not the Rome of today. Italy, the insignificant Italy that has no footprint on global politics or superpower. Or in military sense, this is the Byzantine Empire that the Prophet was talking about because Byzantine Byzantine Empire was the local superpower, or actually was a global superpower at the time. So Prophet Muhammad is talking about that Rome. Look, the Byzantine Empire has been dead for six hundred years, or fourteen twenty-eight, or fourteen forty-eight, whenever that happened. Um, Amma said to him, "See what you're saying." He said, "I say what I heard from Allah's Messenger." Therefore, thereupon he said, "If you say that it is a fact, for they have four qualities: they have the patience to undergo a trial and imme immediately restore themselves to sanity." Blah blah blah. Whatever. I think the rest is irrelevant. But, but look what happened. This is a Sahih Muslim two eight nine eight hadith. For the last hour would not come when the Romans. Uh, last hour would come when the Romans would form a majority amongst people. Now that's that's not going to happen. It's never going to happen now. Italy is never going to become a superpower. Okay, um, another one. Sunan Abi Dawud 4294. The Prophet said the flourishing state of Jerusalem will be when Yathrib is in ruins. The ruined state of Yathrib, Medina, will be when the Great War comes. The outbreak of the Great War will be at the conquest of Constantinople and the conquest of Constantinople when the Dajjal comes forth. He, the Prophet, struck his thigh and or his shoulder with his hand and said, this is as true as you are here or as you are sitting. So, you know, Constantinople fell. No Dajjal came. No um, end of the world came. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. The prophet said the greatest war. This is another one. This Anyway, this one is Daif, so let's not include that one. Sayyid Bukhari, I will narrate to you a hadith and none other than I will tell you about what I heard about after it. I heard that Allah's message is saying, from among the portents of the hour, the following, the religious knowledge will decrease by the death of religious learned men. We can only dream. Religious ignorance will prevail. There will be prevalence of open illegal sexual intercourse. Oh, you evil people, the evil West. You guys have been doing it for a thousand years or thousands of years. Uh, that, nothing special about it. Women will increase in number and men will decrease in number so much so that 50 women will be looked after by one man. Oh, isn't that every incel's best dream? Anyway, 
again, these these are the kind of hadiths that Muslims actually believe in it. That's not going to happen. But by the way, I think there are more uh, men than women initially at birth. Um, and, and commonly, Muslims also think that um, there are more women than men. Um, sorry. Yes, Muslims also. Zakir Naik also says that there are more women than men. And that's why Allah ordained that uh, Allah allowed men to have four wives. <laughs> so, anyway, so, 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 yeah, there you go. So, so, according to this, I think every man should be allowed to have 50, 50 wives. Oh, boy. How are you going to manage that? While the prophets was... Uh, okay, yeah, that's another stupid one. When the power or, or authority comes in the hands of unfit people, then wait for the hour. Unfit people, yeah, okay, well, we've always had people who are capable, and then, then there are people who are incapable, and then incapable people are replaced by capable ones. I mean, that's just been going on for thousands of years, so big deal, another vague, stupid hadith. Um, okay, um, Allah's messenger said, the hour will not be established till the sun rises from the west. And when it rises from the west and the people see it, they will all believe. They'll be like, oh, God, the sun has risen from the west. And that is a time when no good will it do to a soul to believe them. Anyway, so you know what Muslims say to that? I actually, somebody sent me an article and they said that, you know, the pole reversal thing and compass will point to to south because uh, poles will reverse or they reverse or every million years or so. I don't know, however many million years or so. They were saying that since north will become south and south will become north, therefore, technically speaking, the sun will be rising and, and obviously east and west will be reversed as well. So the, <coughs> so the sun will rise from the west. There, voila, there you go. Prophet Muhammad was right. So um, obviously that's just pure semantics and stupidity because we can simply call, um, we can simply say that now our compass is pointing towards south instead of north because it's not like we're going to see suns coming from there and probably Muhammad didn't know anything about the pole, pole reversal he literally meant that you would see the sun rising from the west and setting in the east that's what he thought um, but obviously that's never going to happen and that's another bs that muslims like to tell you um there you go. This is that hadith that I was talking about that Prophet Muhammad said that uh, I've been um, Sahih by Al-Albani. The message of Allah said, I have been sent at the onset of the hour. Muslim Dhamma 22947. I heard the Prophet say the hour and I have been sent together such that it almost preceded me. So um, what happened? Guys, why do you believe in this crap? This is absolutely pathetic and stupid. Um, and then sometimes Prophet Muhammad would say these things as well. He would say, the Prophet said, the keys of the unseen are five. And then he recited, verily, the knowledge of the hour is with Allah alone. Then someone should ask him, like, why the hell are you telling us that, oh, yeah, it's going to happen then, or Byzantine would fall, and then it's going to happen, Dajjal's going to, what the hell are you talking about? So obviously Prophet Muhammad played from both sides of the tennis court. Um, or, or in cricket terms, he was also a bowler and he was also a batsman. He was also the umpire, the umpire and he was also the fielder. And he was also the spectator. <laughs> okay, um, another one. Um, the last hour will not come until the two parties of Muslims confront each other and there is a large scale massacre amongst them and the claim of both of them is the same. Yes, yeah, so this probably was, um, was narrated uh, way after uh, Prophet Muhammad's death. Uh, to somehow justify uh, uh, the Sunni Shia conflict, it, it, it's got all the all the ingredients of um, all the hallmarks of that. The last hour would not come until the Muslims fight with the Turks of people whose face. There you go. This is a uh, um, let me. Let, this is a racist part. With the Turks of people whose faces would be like hammered shields, wearing clothes of hair and walking with shoes of hair. Again, this also looks like it was created. Way after, this is when probably Muslims were fighting the Mongols, maybe. Um, um, and, and they're saying hammered shields. Obviously, this is a racist jibe by uh, whoever uh, narrated this hadith. Probably, probably not the Mongols, but maybe fearing Chinese or people coming from the East, maybe. Obviously, this is the re and hence the reference of hammered shield, uh, because that's what they used to say about people from the, people from the East. Um, uh, another one. 
The prophet said the hour will not be established till a man passes by a grave of somebody and says, would that I were in his place. <laughs> I mean, prophet Muhammad is used to make this shit up. <laughs> you just say so randomly. You mean, but basically what he's trying to say, he's basically trying to say that, oh, because the judgment day would be so ugly and horrible that people would be saying, oh, I wish I was, I, I didn't see this day. I wish I was in, in the grave already. But then in other places, obviously, people from the grave would also be risen. That would be one hell of a Walking Dead show. Um, okay, so who are these? Um, there's another Hadith. Look at this one. The hour will not establish until the happiest of people in the world is Luca bin freaking Luca. Now, who the hell are these Luca bin Luca people? Jamia Tirmidhi 229. So the hour will not establish. Are, are they like the Norwegians? Who, who are the happiest people on earth right now? Let's see. The happiest people on earth today. Okay, uh, index. Let's see. Okay, Finland ranks as the world's happiest country based on 2021 report with a score of 7.8 out of total. Denmark, Iceland, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, honorable mention, Bhutan. Mm, now, which one could it be? Does, uh, it, it, did, Prophet <laughs> did Prophet Muhammad think Finland is going to be Luka bin Luka? <laughs> obviously not prophet muhammad had no idea what the hell he was talking about this is what he was talking about luca bin luca were apparently uh who they found that rasulullah said a time will not come when the most when the most fortunate people in the worldly affair will be luca bin luca in other words he said soon the luca ibn luca will take over this world the word luca is used to indicate foolishness oh the Good old Finnish. Yeah, you foolish people. Uh, ignorance or unworthy characteristics. Luca ibn Luca is a mean fool, son of a mean fool, son of a... <laughs> who, who, fo who follows purely his whims and desires. Oh, that's why they say you follow your whims and desires. There you go. That's why people like Farid and, and uh, Hakikachu and all these guys, they say, oh, you, you just follow your whims and desires to achieve this world at the expense of moral or religious value. So, you know, you want to just go to a strip bar, for, you know, just to follow your whims and desires and, you know, being moral, you know, following moral decadence. He will be the most fortunate in terms of respect, wealth, status and luxury. He will be. OK, so you you, you get the gist. So anyway, so this, that's just some of them. I've got like 20 other um, predictions from the Quran as well. And I think we'll probably do it some of the time to help me produce more videos like these. Support me on Patreon or PayPal.